Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so the wait is over. The book is out. I'm so excited to welcome back to the show Joseph Catania, founder and CEO of Catania Media Consultants. Uh, Joe, first off, welcome back to the show, man. I'm so excited to talk about the new book. Right. Well, thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. It's always an honor to be on your show, of course. And uh, I guess we have a lot to talk about today. You know, oh, yes, of, sir, uh, we do. Um, I'll tell also, you, um, get, getting out the there, podcast. promoting the book and doing what we do. Uh, that's my favorite part of my day. We'll definitely take a deep dive into your writing. And also for the uh, viewers that weren't able to catch the first episode that Joe and I did with, with each other, um, we're going to put all that information in the show notes so you can check it out as well. But we'll, we'll spend a lot of time on Joe's writing today. And of course, we want to get to know more about Catania Media Consultants. But we'll start this episode uh, the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Joe, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Joe, what mission matters to you? Well, I mean, I got a nice little niche going here. My goal, my mission is to help medical clinics, medical companies, and law firms grow their business. And once again, you know, they're professional associations. You know, the, the folks that became doctors or lawyers, you know, didn't take an advertising and marketing, marketing class, you know, in, uh, in law school. So they need a lot of help. You know, I've done it for a long time and I've been doing it. And that's why I started the media company back in 2019 mm -hmm. is to help these companies because they, they're in dire help. And they're always looking uh, to find somebody who understands the law business or the medical business and can um, grow their company exponentially. Great to have you back in the show. I want to spend a, a moment or two for, again, for especially for the listeners that didn't catch the first episode to maybe tell us a little bit more about your background and how you got started. Well, currently I'm the uh, chief financial officer of Catania Law Firm and have been for like the last 20 years. And, you know, along with that, I was also the marketing director of the company. And uh, back in the day, I cut my teeth on, you know, traditional media like TV, radio, billboards and that kind of thing. And then back in the mid 2000s, uh, around 2007, 2008, the, the digital world came upon us and I had to learn a whole new field. Uh, <laughs> and now it's all about integrated marketing, starting with the digital footprint, having that website, being optimized. And then if you have deep enough pockets, you also have traditional media like TV, radio, help you drive business, you know, to your website or to Google My Business and that kind of thing. I like that you've been, you know, you've been around the industry and, and involved with the industry for so long. So as you mentioned, cutting your teeth with things like billboards, radio, you know, prior to even digital, and then obviously your transition and success in digital as well. Um, the reason I bring this up is there's, you know, a lot of people going through transition right now. So meaning whether just for context for everybody that's watching this, we're recording this in 2022, and you know, a lot of changes going on. So whether it's now the idea of maybe we used to all meet face to face for every appointment and maybe virtual like not necessarily our comfort zone or there's a lot of different change going on and for those that adapt maybe they'll be you know they, they have the potential to win big for those that don't unfortunately maybe they don't do as well what would you tell to those that are having been through many different adaptations whether it's digital advertising or otherwise what would you tell some of those entrepreneurs that are out there right now in the middle of their own transitions what kind of advice would you give them Right. Well, I would say uh, in terms of uh, businesses, correct? Is that yes. what we're yeah. I mean, I think in this day and age, you know, if you don't have a great website, I don't mean something looks pretty because if it does, that's a plus. But something that's easy for a potential client or customer to navigate, one that's married to Google in terms of optimization. Because these days, Google is the old telephone book. When people have questions or need to find somebody, where do they go? And they go to Google. So you need to be optimized. So if someone's looking for your law firm, say they're looking for a personal injury law firm in, in yeah. Florida, they'll be able to find you. And hopefully if the digital market is doing a good job, your company will be up there at the top, one of the top three, if possible. Yeah. And that that's the goal, I think. That's the basis to get started. And beyond that, there's, of course, a whole slew of digital strategies you can do, do to enhance that as well. I want to jump around a little bit here. Got to get into the book. So you're, you're writing in the book. Don't do it by yourself. And when I first read the manuscript and I saw this, I'm like, I can, you know, I'll, I'll pick up myself here as we get further along in the interview. But I was like, oh, made that mistake. Oh, did that. Oh, don't want to do that one in the future. <laughs> um, right. what, what inspired the writing? What inspired your writing in this? Well, you know, everybody's got a story, you know, and I was with the law firm for a long time 
kind of moved from the stock brokerage business into the loan firm business. And it was kind of a transition there. But, you know, I noticed when I was a stock broker and got into management back in the 90s, and also when I became, you know, the CFO and marketing director, I realized that you can't do it by yourself. It's too big of an operation. And maybe in the early days, if you're a startup, you got to do maintenance, you got to enter the garbage pails, you got to do IT. I mean, the list goes on. But eventually, as you grow, you start delegating that work. Yes. So when I started with the law firm back in the early 2000s, you know, it's only about three attorneys, maybe a staff of less than 10. And the goal was to grow it exponentially over the next 10 years. So we went from like three attorneys to like 10. And, and we went from, you know, maybe five employees to 35. And uh, it was mainly through advertising and marketing the firm, getting the word out that helped us grow the business. And because of my success in helping grow that business to one of probably the most, I would say, reputable, number one of the largest firms in the Tampa Bay area, I just said, okay, if I've done it for myself, I could do it for other people as well. Yeah. And that's what inspired me to launch Catania Media Consultants back in 2019. I love it. It's like as an entrepreneur, when you figure something out for yourself, if you can then, you know, you've been blessed to have had that experience. If you can then turn that around and figure out a way to be a blessing to others and to help others. I mean, I think it's it's great. I mean, we all win from that overall. So I think it's a, it's an, it's a great, a great tool and a great experience that you, you've taken or a great way that you've used your experience as a tool to help others. So diving a little bit further and, and when you said, you know, you can't do it by yourself, right? You have to involve other individuals. I can tell you like earlier on in, in my career as an entrepreneur, like I didn't quite get that. I think I had some of those like control, like I, it has to be done this way or that way. It was only until I started getting more people involved and getting more ideas and new ideas that things really started to grow. What do you find sometimes holds back entrepreneurs on their journey from like hitting that next level, that proverbial level, like whatever that is for them? What are some right. of the things that you feel holds them back? Well, I would use my experience with the law firm as the best example. When I got in there, it was very small. The owners wanted a 10-year plan to grow it substantially. And so I had to come up with a business plan. First mm -hmm. of all, you need a plan, a business plan. Yeah. You know, you need a, a way to navigate where you're going to go, where you want to end up. From there, you want to hire, you need the right people. To help yeah. you out. And that goes back to my, my title, you know, don't do, don't do it all by yourself. Yeah. So in terms of a law firm, you know, I, I hired a seasoned paralegal that mm -hmm. would help me hire and train the paralegals. I made mm -hmm. sure that in the intake department, because in personal injury, you're getting calls all day and you need mm -hmm. folks that are going to be sympathetic. These people have been in accidents or gotten hurt, understand the nuances of, for example, motor vehicle accidents and, and mm -hmm. how to, uh, you know, talk to the client intelligently, a uh, pension client, I should say, and ultimately close it and make them understand that after telling them the features and benefits, why they should sign up with you. So I, the, having an intake manager to train these people and supervise them is very important. That was number two. And the number three was also to have a good bookkeeper, mm -hmm. someone who could uh, you know, take care of accounts payable, receivable, manage cash mm -hmm. flow, and so on and so forth. So by having those three people under my belt, mm -hmm. you know, and getting them installed in that first year was crucial because then I was able to move forward with my plan, my business plan, mm -hmm. and I'm a more of a visionary. So once I get those people in place, they really do the most of the day-to-day -day work, most of the heavy lifting, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I kind of oversee them and let them help me run the business. And it worked out pretty well. And eventually, of course, more calls came in. So we had to, had to hire more people and intake. And then eventually we had more cases. So we had to hire more paralegals. Good problem to have. And just grew from there. Now, I think it was perfect. I mean, sometimes it's hard to gauge your growth and how quickly you're growing. And there were a few times that we probably grew too quickly. We maybe hired too many people too quickly. And sometimes you have to slow down, take a deep breath, pull back a little bit and uh, reassess. And then eventually move forward again. Mm -hmm. But luckily, the business, that business in particular is recession proof. People are always going to get hurt, whether it be medical malpractice, whether it be motor vehicle accidents, whether it be nursing home neglect. Uh, someone's mm -hmm. always going to get hurt. Yeah, I mean, that's it, basically. And then from there, we hired more people and we made sure that these people were considered valuable employees and let them know mm -hmm. it. I mean, there was training, there was team meetings, there was outings, uh, there were incentives in terms of bonuses, because in order to, there's not a lot of talent out there. In order to find talent and hold on to talent, you got to pay a premium for that because, you know, your business and its growth is only as good as not only your management underneath you, but also the staff that works underneath them. And you mentioned this in, in the book. So you write about like how to find the right people. And, and so let's go a little, let's stick on that point a little bit longer. Like tell us a little bit more of your secret sauce. 
Right. So finding the right people is really hard. As I said, the yeah. talent pool out there isn't all that great. And what you want to try to do is find A employees. They're not a dime a dozen, yeah. but at least B employees that can be up-trained, mm -hmm. you know, to become A players. And sometimes you might find a C plus employee that you can train up to a B. Mm -hmm. so that's the whole idea over a period of time is wean out of all the, the C and D, you know, players, or I should say employees, and then try to hire B and A employees and mm -hmm. see if you can up-trade, you know, train some of the, uh, the lesser employees. But a lot of times you put an ad out, but I think most often we work through recruiters and they did the initial training, I should say interviewing, not training, interviewing. And so by the time they got to us, they all had all the basics under their belt. Experience, knowledgeable, good work ethic. You can have all that stuff, but you don't really like to work. That's going to show mm -hmm. up too. So by the time they got in front of us, they were heavily screened and it made our job mm -hmm a lot easier. So I would say anybody who's looking to find good people, certainly put ads out there. You never know who's going to answer one. If you can work with a recruiting company, they're going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you and make your job a lot easier. You also mentioned uh, the idea of having a plan uh, in the book, specifically a six month plan. What does that look like? Like, what does that plan look well, like? We actually have two plans. One was a 10 year plan for the entire business and, and its future growth. The other is a six month plan that pertains to employees. Because once you go through the hiring process and once you make that decision to hire somebody, then they go on like 90 day probation. And if they make it beyond that, after six months, you have basically a, an assessment of that person's work product over that six months. And by then, or through that period, training them, we're having team meetings to get them excited about mm -hmm. the firm and the business they're in. Maybe more importantly, because a lot of the business involves yeah. talking to people, interfacing with people. It's all very important to have a bubbly personality, sympathetic, energetic, and we kind of listen to phone calls and we heard what people were doing and they're doing fine. We let them go. If they needed some work, we would work with them to see if they, we can you know, up-train them. Yeah. And then after six months, if they're kind of, we can check all the boxes, we'll probably you know, give them some kind of promotion monetary incentives, and they could be part of the building blocks going forward. If that person mm -hmm. doesn't fit that mold, then we'll probably just part as friends. But in the beginning is you've got to wean people out and mm -hmm. get your get your staff and your management in place. That's probably the best way to do it, in my opinion. You mentioned in the in the early days, maybe hiring a little bit too many too soon, or I, I feel for entrepreneurs out there, like that's always a tricky thing. Like, like when do you scale, especially you're not, you know, well funded or something else. And you're thinking about like, when do you scale? Because every bit that you spend is kind of like, you, you got to be real careful in the beginning. How do you how do you navigate that? Well, you know, you got to be obviously in tune with the nuances of your business. You know, I think just when you start to get more calls and you start to sign up, I'm using the law firm as an example, you start to get more calls and you start to open up more cases and the paralegals then have to take on much bigger loads. You then say, okay, we're growing. You know, this was our sales this month. This is our sales last month. This is our sales a year ago. And we can see the growth rate and try to project out. And then you start hiring a few more people, you know, for intake. You may hire a few more paralegals. And you kind of sit back and see how that works and see if the workload can be completed with the additional hirees. But if not, you can do add more. Sometimes you don't know. And sometimes, you know, some months are great. Some months are not, you know, because you settle some big cases, you're going to have a banner month. Sometimes you don't, you know, you have a slower month. So things kind of, you know, over a period of time just kind of level off. But sometimes you get too far ahead of yourself and it's not reality, you know, and you've hired too many people, then you've got to either let people go or you've got to furlough people and, and kind of pull back, digest what you did, and then eventually take a breather, deep breath, and then move forward again. I think almost every business kind of goes through something similar, you know, because it's not just a magic carpet ride to the top. You're going to have some, what I call uh, speed bumps. Absolutely. And then you also have maybe some unexpected external events, right? That you have no control over, like a pandemic or all these other things right. that can happen that maybe depending on your sis, on your business, you're in the market that you're working on, as you mentioned, a little bit of a recession proof type business, but for others, that's not the case, right? So, I, um, I, yeah, I always thought sort it of was. And yeah. it had to, we've been through you know, various recessions over the years, 9-11, mm -hmm. 2008, 2009, you know, real estate, financial crisis, and we really didn't feel it. Mm -hmm. But when this pandemic hit back in the spring, of 2020. Hmm. And I said, okay, well, we'll get this through this one too. No problem. But then they had the lockdowns. Yeah. I remember, I didn't even think about it. You know, because a lot of our business is motor vehicle accidents. Oh, you know? yeah. And so I'm getting on the interstate in the morning on the first day of lockdown. I'm saying, where are all the cars? Oh, yeah. I started to panic in my head. I'm saying, that's what we depend on. Because our, you know, our infrastructure down here is always behind. The state's growing so quickly. Our infrastructure yeah. is always behind. And there's no mass transit. And so, the, you know, and then, the, you know, the snowbirds come down, the vacationers come down, the roads get overloaded. And of course, there's a certain number of, fortunately, you know, a certain number of car accidents, but nobody was on the road. 
Wow. So that was kind of a scary thing. So we had to pair back. We had to, and there's, there's a situation where you have to you know, lay off some of the maybe C players that you want, you know, they're not going to hang in that much longer. You know, everybody had to maybe cut back a little bit in certain ways mm-hmm. to get through it and find out how this is going to work out. Yeah. Uh, but what was a big, big thing for us and for probably many businesses are the PPP mm-hmm. loans. Um, and they came in handy and got us through the lockout. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, or should they lock down? And then after that, things started to pick back up slowly and surely. And, you know, right now we're full capacity. You know, we're probably, uh, we're probably busier than they were. But there was a scary time where, you know, no one could, that was the famous black swan event. So oh, yeah. Never predict what happened. And the day I got on the on the interstate and said, Oh my God, here we go. We gotta come up with a plan. <laughs> Never had this going on before. And so you deal with it. And so you know, and part of it's money management because you make sure that you have money put aside for a rainy day. Or something that you can never see happen, and yeah. so if it happens, you're not totally freaking out and selling the house, you know, two, a week or two later, you know, and you get through it. So it all worked out. We did well, and we'll come back stronger than ever. But that's what to do with good owners, good management, and good staff underneath you, keeping an engine running. Yeah, and when I think about it, and I mean, I still have chills. I think we were just looking at uh, expanding and thinking about like office space and some other things for Mission Matters right before the pandemic. And I'm like, ooh, I'm glad that that was not a number one priority item at that time. So we were like passively, but working towards it because, man, that would that would have hurt. <laughs> um, well, let so. me tell you, I mean, the timing was unbelievable. That's when, right around that time, I started Catania Media Consultants. What a time to launch your business. I, and I started actually in December of the previous year. By the time I got my website up, or my social media yeah. site up, it was into February. All of a sudden, you hear about this pandemic. And before you know it, next month, probably on this in your backyard, and they're calling for a lockdown. Yeah. So needless to say, 2020 wasn't a great year for me in the launch of that business. Now, I did eventually, later on in the year, open up some accounts and got things going. But it wasn't a, a good Full year of business, but luckily yeah. the long year is started to pick up, and now it's it's moving along very well. You just got to hang in there, really. You know? Absolutely, <laughs> that, that's what I say. You do have to hang in there and uh, and weather the storm, and just understand that uh, you know whether it's depending on your age when you're whoever's watching this, whether it's you know 2008, 2002, before that the 80s, I mean 70s. I mean it just depends how long you've been in business, right? right. But there's uh, there's always something that's going to happen and come up. And I like that you actually addressed it in your writing, and that's really mistakes are part of the process. So when I think about the idea of mistakes and like how often they happen and how we try to get better from them, so it can be a tricky thing sometimes, right? What inspired that piece? Well, I mean, uh, mistakes, I mean, everybody's going to make mistakes. And so, you know, if you become an entrepreneur, and open up a business, you have to prepare to be totally dedicated to that because people yeah. will tell you, oh, it's a lot of work. But once you get in there, you realize it's a lot of work in the beginning. <laughs> You're doing a lot of stuff. So you're bound to make mistakes and things are bound to happen. So I think that it's a good story to tell other current entrepreneurs or, or startups or, or future ones that, you know what, you're going to go in there, you're going to realize the massive amount of work. But if you're dedicated to be successful, you're going to put in those 60, 70 hours a week, you're going to work those nights and the weekends, you know, and you're going to make mistakes, probably more so in the beginning than later on as you become seasoned. Here's really the key. Mistakes are okay. Even if you're a senior leader, you got to avoid the catastrophic mistakes. Yeah. No, that can put you out of business real quick. Oh, yeah. I mean, so you're always learning. It's like a practice, like a, you know, like anything else. You're learning along the way. Even when you become seasoned and doing it for a while, you're still, you're always learning. Mm-hmm. You, and you should always be learning. Never stop learning. Expect mistakes. And that's just part of being an entrepreneur and, and, and running a business, you know. If you obviously with the benefit of hindsight, right, if you could um, through all the you know ups and downs that you've been through in your career, if you could go back to that Joe Catania entrepreneur that's just getting started like earlier in his career. And if you could throw him some uh, some softballs or some some advice, what kind of things would you tell him? I would say have a plan before you get into it. Don't go in there willy-nilly and just kind of wing it by the, you know, by the seat of your pants. Have a plan, a written plan. Make sure you have some cash in the bank, not only yeah. for personal reasons, but also for the business. Some cash in the bank. Mm-hmm. Start slow. If you're working out of your home, that's fine. Or if you need a small office, do that. But be very frugal. You know, part of it also will be getting out there in the public, you know, joining organizations, stopping people on the back, making contacts and all that kind of thing. Take it slow, but work hard. And there will be a time. Whether it be in a couple of years, a little less, a little longer. Now, this is this was my thing back when I became a stockbroker because I was just given a desk and a phone book and that's it. So, it is in your back of your mind, you've got to say failure isn't going to happen. It, yeah. it is not part of the plan. More times than not, that that will get you through. 
But really, what, what's the, the stat? Two out of three businesses, new businesses, end up going mm-hmm. belly up, I think, after a couple of years. So it, it's hard. Yeah. And you have to be hungry. You have to want it. And you have to be a student of the game. Keep mm-hmm. on learning and talk to people that are older than you, more experienced than you. That find out what they've done to build mm-hmm. their business and why they're successful. And keep your nose to the going. So that's all you can really do. And yeah. um, more times than not, that'll, that'll get you through the hard times. Man, you, you have me reminiscing over here, Joe, like the mistakes that you yeah. said that I probably should have told myself, I would have told myself the same thing. Like you don't need to purchase all the, the bells and the whistles. You need to worry about getting a client. You need to have a plan and that maybe some of your corporate experience does not translate to your entrepreneurial experience. <laughs> like right. it's not already built. Like a lot of the systems and things that work for you in the past may not work for whatever reason, not worth the time trying to figure out why, have a plan and, and be willing to pivot and adjust and to uh right. and to just understand that you know you have to focus on getting clients and and think more about cash flow you don't have sums of money coming to save you right like you got it you got to make sure that you're watching the watching the dial on that and uh, just in case you know clients don't come right like to make sure that you can stay right. in the game i think a lot of people watching this are going to benefit from hearing you say this for sure it's awesome yeah, so, so you know also go along with that just you know things yeah. that should be considered is keep a positive mind frame don't get mm-hmm. negative. I mean, I'll be lying if I never said <clears throat> when I was starting up that, oh my God, what have I done? You're always going to have days like that. Yeah. What have I myself into? But, you know, you got to keep a positive mind frame, hang around people that are positive, exercise, relieve yourself of that stress, mm-hmm. do all the things that you can do to stay focused, positive, full of energy. Once again, know that you're going to make it at some point, no mm-hmm. matter how hard things look or, how, or maybe how bad things look yeah. at one point or another. Tenacity would be the word. So, Joe, I do want to spend some time on uh, Catania Media uh, Media Consultants. So you mentioned what you do, but I do want to go further. So tell us a little bit more about your practice. Right. Well, I started because uh, I had a lot of success, you know, with Mm -hmm. with the law firm for a long, long time. And so I wanted to be able to help out other people, professional associations Mm -hmm. like, you know, doctors, medical clinics, lawyers, Mm -hmm. law firms, that kind of thing, because they need more help than anybody else. Yeah. A lot of times they kind of think that they know what they want to do or they don't understand what needs to be done out there in terms of, you know, marking your business, doing some PR, getting branded and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so I, I go in there and usually talk to them about a market strategy. I, it's not, I don't walk in there and say, well, you got to buy this, you got to buy that. Uh, it's all about, you know, telling them what they probably need, finding out who their target client is, mm-hmm. you know, and then doing a little research on myself and coming up with a plan for them to show them, okay, here's your target audience. This mm-hmm. is how we can best get in front of them you don't want to go out there and advertise the market willy-nilly and you know, necessarily cast that, that big net because at this point in time, you know, you need to put your money in a place where it's going to be working most efficiently for you. Mm. And that's what I find out with a lot of these startup law firms or medical companies or even newer ones. And so the key is to get that digital footprint. And that's really what I do with most people that are new. Now, people that are established, been around for a while, sometimes they need to refresh in terms of their you know, digital strategies. Uh, and usually I kind of dig a little bit more to find out how they're doing. And mm-hmm. a lot of times they'll say, well, we've been doing this for a while, but it looks like, you know, it helped in the beginning, but it's kind of stagnant. It's, you know, it's kind of topped out. And in those situations, I can help them out as too. You know, just mm-hmm. kind of look at what they're doing. What can we do differently? Uh, mm-hmm. Can we do an integrative approach? If they're already in digital, can, we, can they do some TV radio, some billboards, depending on the business they're in. Uh, and But I do a full assessment of their business, what they're doing now or not doing, and come mm-hmm. up with a plan. So I'm, I'm more about campaigns. Even mm-hmm. if there are small ones in the beginning, get started, and you have to then build upon them later on. So yeah. Sell, walk, walk in there saying, well, I want to sell you a website. I want to say, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a campaign to show you how you can grow your business over a period of time. And that's how I walk into every situation. And where do you find, and I, I find this interesting because I, I have a feeling there's some parallels between your niche and just, you know, entrepreneurs in general. So I'm curious to hear from you. Where do you find a lot of, uh, a lot of founders or co-founders go wrong when they're going about like these strategies? Because you're, you're in these firms all the time. I think that, I don't, and I don't know, I'll probably get, get some of these guys pissed off, but a lot of them, you're talking about like lawyers, doctors, that kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times they tend to be know-it-alls, you know, and I, mm. of course I work for a law firm and I can see that, and, and they have to have a certain demeanor and certain, you know, tough yeah. guy about them sometimes. And of course, 
It's their business. They're proud of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they sometimes don't want people to tell them what to do or, or mm -hmm. what they need. And that's why I prefer to deal with people that know it's time to get help mm -hmm. and, and be open-minded and flexible to listen on how we can grow things. Those are the people I have the, the greatest luck with and the most successful, successful longer term. The yeah. ones that, you know, well, you'll talk to them, they'll yes to death and they'll ghost you and you see them again. They're the ones that are suffering later on down the road because yeah. they think they know better or they don't, I want to pay for this, I want to pay for that. But I mean, you know, all that is, you know, to make money, you, know, you have to spend money, you know? So um, that's been my feeling, you know, they, they need to be open-minded. Uh, I understand. I always ask them you know, what your budget might be. And so I try mm -hmm. to work within that budget to get them started. If it's a new business or if it's a large business, I still ask them what their budget is and try to be most efficient, putting together a campaign where they can see discernible results, either in their phone ringing, patients walking through the door, whatever it might be. And so, I mean, you have a unique vantage point because as I mentioned, like, so you're deep in your niche and you've done it for yourself, right? For your own firm. So what interests you in the space right now? Like what's exciting, whether it's digital, traditional, advertised, otherwise, um, what gets you excited right now? Well, I would say in terms of something that's relatively new, streaming video. Right now, about 35% of people who view TV view streaming. The number of cord cutters, millions per year around mm. the country. And we're heading to a point in time where, you know, people are not going to want to pay for cable at mm -hmm. all. And, and, and that's where we are right now. Actually, it's just going to get worse. I can see a time five or 10 years down the road that streaming video, streaming TV, connected TV, the number of different names, OTT, there's other names, for it, will be the main way people view content. Yeah. And I think right now it's, you know, it's been around for maybe five years, a little longer maybe, but it's, it's grown every year. Analytics have gotten better. The reach has gotten better. But you still don't have that audience that you would have. In broadcast it's still a lot bigger and broadcast tv is still the king even though their reign is kind of diminishing now it has mm. been for years uh the beauty about connected tv streaming video is that you can come up with your client's profile and then create ads to serve up to that particular profile so mm -hmm. people are watching tv in their living room and uh, that person happens to fit your profile you'll mm -hmm. be able to serve up your ad to them so mm -hmm. really, it's sold on impressions, you know, rather than a cost per point like broadcast. Yeah. And so whether you're advertising at night, it's a matter because uh, daytime, whatever, it only be served up to people that have the profile you're looking for. So it's mm -hmm. a great way to target people and have a better chance of conversions because you're not just finding people, you're finding people that need your service. I would say anybody who has not got into the realm of streaming video, connected TV, yeah. uh, you don't want to think about it. Even if at this point, dabble in it. Start getting involved because if you're not involved now, you will be involved at some point down the road if you're a multimedia advertiser. And so you spoke from the advertising side of things. I mean, what about the other side of things like just content creation? Do you feel that, you know, lawyers, doctors, professionals should be creating more content, whether it's streaming or otherwise? I think so. I mean, obviously, we provide those services as well. I have folks that, you know, I work, team members I work with that are graphic designers and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think especially when it comes to the website, I mean, mm -hmm. Google wants to see fresh material. They want to see mm -hmm. videos. They want to see photos. They want to see awards mm -hmm. uh, and all kinds of things. And keep it fresh because if you don't do any new content, say in six months or nine months, then Google is going to stop looking at you. Mm -hmm. Or at least not looking at you the same. So it's always good to make sure content, uh, more blogs, up-to-date blogs, very important. Because you want to stay at the top of Google search mm -hmm. under the most important keywords and phrases for you. Content is important, very important when it comes to websites. Yeah. Certainly when you're doing ads, it's always good to do an A and B testing to find out which ads, like we do an online display advertising, to find out which ads are working the best. Mm -hmm. You do that through analytics, and then that helps you use your money more efficiently. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan, obviously, of creating content. But the idea here that I always I always try to tell people, especially professionals, right, because that's the world we come from, or at least I come from and you come from, is that like the days of just, you know, kind of sitting behind the big desk and having the corner office and then everybody come to you like, I mean, some of that's gone. Like people when they look online, they want to see you, you have to have a digital footprint, like I don't care if it's blogs, website, whatever. If your digital footprint is non-existent and your competitor is like many times you're going to lose that business. Right. And, and, and social proof is very important, too, because yeah. there's so many people that are in the dark digital marketing business, just one man shops. Like, hey, I can do this stuff. I'm going to go for it. It's important if you're the person buying the advertising and want to hire a digital marketing agency. To look for the social proof on their site. You know, what is their background and experience? Do they have a success story? Yeah. Uh, have they got an extra certificate in digital marketing or other things uh, to educate themselves? Have they got awards of any kind because yeah. of their achievements in, in digital marketing and helping other businesses grow? 
that stuff's all important. If you're not doing it, you're not really differentiating yourself from the competition. So if you got two websites you're looking at, two people you're trying to decide which to go with, and then one person's got all these awards and the videos and mm-hmm. you know testimonials are huge for clients, and the other person just had a lot of fluff, well, it's going to be easy to make the decision. That's the key because, you know, there's zillions of websites out there and every, almost every category of business is competitive. Mm-hmm. So what is your differentiator? What are you doing that someone is not? Why would someone who's looking for someone like you to help mm-hmm. them manage their advertising and marketing, why would they hire you? What are you going to give them that the other guy won't? And you can, mm-hmm. that's what you got to do. That's the way you got to think. Well, Joe, I uh, just have to say, it's been great having you back on the show. So excited to continue to promote this book, this, this book that we recently released together. I will have the, uh, for the audience, everybody that's watching, we'll have a link in the show notes so that you can uh, just click on it and uh, pick up a copy. But I just have to ask Joe, so what's next? I mean, what's next for you? Uh, what's next well, for Catania Media Consultant? Uh, I think you kind of know, well, I'll jog your memory. It's uh, starting my podcast with you guys. Oh. And, uh, I'm hoping that's going to happen next month. I mean, originally I was... No, don't tease to... me, Joe. I didn't bring it up because I didn't want you to tease me. Get my hopes up and all this. And well, I'm man. like, come on. And I don't want to get I my hopes up. I want to let you know I haven't forgot about you. And I'm still very eager. And I, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm shooting for next month for sure to get the ball rolling. Um, all right. Yeah. Now I got it on tape. So, uh, or recorded yeah. or streamed, whatever. So uh, we're in and uh, we'll make sure Matt, the whole team is on you on this one. <laughs> I got a date. Tell you also, I mean, you guys, uh, you know, with uh, helping me publish my book, I mean, you, know, it's, you guys did a very professional job. Your staff did a phenomenal job getting me through the process. I would recommend you guys to anybody else if they had interest in, in writing a book you know, about business and entrepreneurship. So I appreciate that a lot. Fantastic. Thank you for that. And if somebody's watching this and they want to connect and follow up and learn more about Catania Media or just to follow your journey, um, how, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah. I mean, if they want to find about what I do, they can go to my website. It's cataniamedia.com. If they want to send out a, a message, discuss things, talk on the phone, or just, you know, get, you know use a JC at cataniamedia.com. Fantastic. And we'll put all that information again in the show notes so that uh, the audience can just click on it and head right on over. And uh, speaking of the audience, if this is your first time uh, watching a Mission Matters episode or engaging with the platform, we're all about bringing on entrepreneurs, executives, experts, and having them share their mission, their motivation, right? Why do they do what they do? Like being an entrepreneur, being an executive, like not easy things to do. How are they providing value into the world? Like if that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun to you, Hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Joe, uh, looking forward to that podcast launch and then to continue to uh, promote this book with you and to see your continued success with Catania Media Consultant. So thanks again for coming back on the show. All right. Thanks, Adam.